Hey all, Siege here, and today, well today I want to talk about something I think doesn't really get brought up enough in the game, but that I've been asking myself more and more recently. Are there Dark Tenno? If so, where exactly are they, and if not, why, and how is that even possible? Here's what got me thinking about that. During the War Within quest, we're shown this exchange. Teshin? You shouldn't have come here. You have ruined us both. Teshin Dax. Teshin Dax? You're with them? I have come as you commanded, my queens. And this is your offering? My sister needs the orphan child, not its infested puppet. The child? For what purpose? <laughs> to eat it, of course. Hushworm! Do not question your lords, Teshin Dax. Bring me the orphan. Bring me my Yuvan. Enough! <gasps> How rude! Oh, it's not their fault, Worm. Mummy and Daddy weren't around long enough to teach them any manners. <laughs> we will have to. Ordis? What is this? Uh, transference surge, operator. You're losing your Warframe connection. You have some idea that you're invincible, don't you? Nestled away in that mad Cephalon's crib. But you belong to me now. For you see, child, we conceived of these ugly metal cysts. Operator, cut the link! I... I can't... We gave you your precious gifts. And now, just as easily, we take them all away! So first, this entire situation is happening essentially within the Tenno's head. I know the first time I played this quest, I was really confused about what was going on, but it's the reason why everything essentially resets within the orbiter once the Tenno unlocks his or her latent powers. In fact, what we're seeing here is the process by which continuity is performed, a method of causing so much pain and despair within the subconscious of the victim that they essentially break, and then their mind is basically taken over. But after playing this quest again, I began to wonder to myself, even if the Grenier Queen was unsuccessful in this particular exchange, she had to have been influenced by others into thinking it would actually work, and as it appears in this cinematic at least, confident that it would in fact allow her to live on in the body of a Tenno through the established Orican method of continuity using Kuva, the red and black substance we're shown at different times during the quest. Now. Upon first thought, I considered that continuity was most likely performed with individuals younger than the one attempting to preserve their life, basically giving them a new shell for their previous consciousness to inhabit. But then I got to thinking about characters who are alluded to already having undergone the process, and, well, the questions I began to ask were, do they keep any aspect of their original visual appearance? Or maybe through time, does the new host body eventually take on the visual characteristics of the previous entity? Because quite frankly, if not, we have a much bigger problem than I feel anyone has really brought up, at least from what I've seen. First, there is the very real possibility that we don't really know what the true forms of anyone actually look like. Think about it. 
if the queen would have performed the continuity with our Tenno bodies successfully, she would look, well, like us. Sure, maybe she would dress like herself in the typical garb the Grenier queens seem to wear or inhabit, but at least in body, she would look no different from any other Tenno we see in game. Which is essentially what got me thinking that in theory, if any Orican had performed the continuity in the past, there wouldn't be any true way to discern what they looked like originally. For example, let's consider someone like Ballas. Prior to his actual visual introduction during the Apostasy Prologue, the only idea of who we believed him to be came from images. But are they images of his original self or just the current shell he inhabits? I would assume most of the high-ranking Orkin we know of, himself, Nihil, and most likely Teshin, as he's been around and witnessed the Orkin era, meaning he is significantly older than any typical human and because he has never actually provided a reason why this is, it's most likely they all have engaged in the continuity process. Teshin, while not knowing exactly what Kuva is, does appear to at least acknowledge what he believes it to be, which may in fact come from the idea that he too has participated and has a basic understanding of what it is capable of. And again, considering his incredible longevity, well, I mean, you can make your own conclusions, but I know what I believe at least. When it comes to Teshin though, I'm not sure we would recognize him pre or post continuity anyhow, given the mask he consistently wears and may even explain why the mask is constructed as it is, essentially making him basically look the same no matter whose body he inhabits. With Nihil and Ballas, though, there's really no way to know. Which, in my opinion, really does muddy the waters regarding actually knowing who's who in regards to potential Orokin. You see where I'm going with this? What's stopping any former Orokin from performing the continuity and just assuming a new identity? Potentially, and this is where it ties into today's video, the identity of a person they completed the continuity on. That means literally anyone in the game could potentially be a former Orokin. So, back to Teshin. Interestingly enough, Tao Regor refers to Teshin as a pseudo-Tenno, and while I believe most assume this to be just a loose association, with the knowledge Teshin has regarding the Tenno during the War Within and their former abilities, it could also mean he is, or at least was one as well. He seems taken aback when he realizes the queens are interested in the child versus the Warframe, and one has to wonder if the reason behind this is that he knows firsthand what the Tenno are capable of, and what the Grenier Queen in a Tenno body might too be able to achieve. He's also quite durable during the encounter with us in the Queen's throne room, and is willing to engage us, wishing for us to defeat him. Is it because he knew he wouldn't or maybe couldn't die in the process? One has to wonder. As stated earlier, the knowledge he possesses of the Tenno and their former selves is really the only information we've been given in the game up to that point. And it's interesting that through the trial he essentially sends us through, would it be that much of a stretch to think that he has the powers of a Tenno as well? Add to that, his appearance in this place. I mean, how is he even here within this type of astral projection with the Tenno during the Queen's continuity process? To me, it's either he knows how continuity works or he too can engage in transference. His original Dax lineage would definitely explain his continued allegiance to the Queen as, in mind at least, he remains a Dax soldier bound to the code of the Queen's scepter, even if the body he inhabits is one of a former Tenno. But... Although this isn't proof, it at least allows for a discussion regarding exactly what Teshin is and how he seems to be able to subvert the powers of the Queen, who he is in ways still a servant to. And this all is just in regards to the idea of continuity, but I feel like there's even more reason to assume that actual Dark Tenno could in fact exist. The argument could be made at this point that we really don't know which side is which in the Warframe universe. Is the path the Tenno are currently on one of righteousness, or are we just merely mercenaries? We are led to believe our actions in game are for the right causes, but what exactly is the end game of the Tenno? We murder every adversary we come into contact with, no matter the faction, and do it by the thousands. Certainly we appear to help those of righteous origin, but do we have any proof of that? 
someone, be it the Lotus, the Salarian people, the Ostrons, Alad V, the Corpus, the Grenier, they merely tell us who to go after and we do it, with the reward of some sort being the only prerequisite to engaging in genocide. No one really questions why we're fighting, with the best reason coming in the form of balancing power in the system, but who determines what that balance even is? What is the goal of our warmongering? The Earth and most of the soul system have already been brought to ruin at this point. We are constantly at war with the sentience, but the sentience only real fight is with the Orican, who were by all accounts a fascistic society bent on progress, beauty, and excess at the expense of any group of individuals they deemed a lower class of citizen and unquestioned loyalty to them as the dominant group was considered paramount for any of the aforementioned citizenry to even survive. Tenets such as capitalism were strongly opposed as the idea of any group of people gaining resources or wealth that might transfer into power, potentially enough to overthrow them, were highly contested as shown by the story of Parvis Granum and forced slavery within a distinct caste system were implemented in order to keep Orc and elites safe within the walls of unquestionable power they established for themselves. Nata tells us after defeating the Ropalolist, so it is, so you have done time and time again, eradicating my people, my history, so it will be with yours, child, and that we suffer these testaments of Tenno evil, their voice and void, suffer it well, ancient child. And in truth, the sentients were solely opposed to the Orican and the Tenno were conditioned to combat them as the Orican high technology was not enough to defeat this new race of thinking machines the Orican themselves essentially created. The lore suggests that at some point, the Tenno did in fact turn on the Orkin and destroy their leadership from inside, but to this day they remain locked in constant combat with every race in the system. So can we really be considered the good guys? Also, consider the treatment of the Tenno and the fact that they are, at least in appearance and general behavior, children without the guidance of parents, rather instruction from warmongering groups. First the Orican, then the Lotus, and finally in the current age to whatever faction is willing to pay the right price. And in this regard, without a strong sense of morality being instilled, it's really anyone's guess as to what they feel is worth fighting for. Up to this point, it's just profit. These children are literal gods that have no equal in the system, conversing with each other in newly purchased Warframe skins and fashionable clothing within the relays much in the same vein as the Orican themselves did at one point. The future of the Tenno can fall in really whatever way they are manipulated to, be that of Christ-like paragon figures such as, say, Superman, or something more akin to that of the character Brightburn, a renegade being of unspeakable power hell-bent on ruling the system and annihilating anyone or anything that would get in his or her way. When one takes into consideration the troubling way in which these children have been manipulated for the betterment of whoever appears to be pulling their strings at that particular moment, it's not hard to consider that even now certain Tenno may not have the same ideals as others. And it's really only a matter of time before the Tenno themselves are locked in mortal combat for the sake and soul of the universe in its entirety. It's a troubling thought to consider that even if we're doing things from a moral perspective, that it's all just another manipulation. It's not like the Tenno ever question anything they do. There's no sense of critical thinking to even take a moment to ponder whose side we're even on at this point, aside from our own, of course. And that is probably the scariest aspect of the entire concept. All it takes is a bit of misinformation, a lie here, an omission of truth there, and poof, we're fighting for the wrong side. Do you even know what side you're fighting for? And let me ask you this. Who is the right side in Warframe, in your opinion at least? And if you found that you were actually the villain, would you even care? Are you that dug in ideologically to never consider those who you follow might not be doing things with the best interests of those that can't fight back in mind? And again, do you care? I'll be curious to read your comments on this one. They say power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And the Tenno undoubtedly have absolute power. So have some already been corrupted absolutely? 
And if so, are you one of them? A dark tenno? Many of your answers within the comments will tell that exact tale. But with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video today and it caught you thinking a little bit about how those in places of power might be utilizing those beneath them to do, well, whatever they might need them to. When you really think about it, it's probably not all that foreign of a concept to consider in the end. At any rate, I hope you all have a wonderful day today, wonderful rest of your week. Remember to never stop thinking critically. And I'll talk at you all in the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye.